All right, we are told every day that the world is coming to an end, and the only way that we can save it is if we switch to renewable energy like wind and solar. So why is it that the left, who keeps talking about this uh, uh, inevitable apocalypse, why are they rejecting nuclear power? We're going to talk about that on this episode of Stopping Socialism TV. But before we do, I have to uh, send out that call to all of you. If you want to help us get this message, this anti-socialism message to more people, you can help us out by hitting that like button, maybe putting a comment in there, but most importantly, subscribing to this channel. Facebook and Google and YouTube, they're not doing us any favors, but you can help us out by just doing those couple of things. So Justin, the left hating nuclear power... Um, I guess we should start off by explaining why they should like it, I guess. You want to you want to start off with that? Right. Well, uh, I think the the most important reason that they should like nuclear power is that nuclear power is in terms of the amount of land that it takes up is extremely extremely small. Most environmentalism uh, historically speaking, is focused on land use. It's focused on destroying lots of land or conserving lots of land. That's usually what environmentalists care about. What makes it so... Well, we'll get into the renewable energy stuff, I guess, soon. But what's really great about nuclear energy is that it takes up very, very little amount of land and relative to the amount of energy that it produces. Um, and so I think that's a really fantastic benefit to it. Um, the other thing, of course, is if you believe that uh, carbon dioxide emissions are destroying the planet, that we're all going to die from CO2, then, of course, nuclear power is the greatest form of energy that we have because it is able to produce tons of power. You can do it anywhere, unlike, say, hydropower or something, and it, it emits almost no CO2 emissions. So if you believe that we're all going to die from CO2 emissions because CO2 emissions cause climate change and climate change is going to be catastrophic um, and humans can't adapt to it quickly enough. And so we're all going to, you know, drown in the rising seas or something. If you believe that, then nuclear power is a great option for that reason too. So I would say those are the two primary reasons. Doesn't consume much land, which means it's protecting the environment in that way. And, um, whatever the second thing is that I just said. <laughs> yeah, no CO2 emissions. No CO2. Yeah, I mean that I mean that's got to be the biggest one in the world right there. It's like, you know, we we always kind of talk about the the shortcomings of wind and solar and I'm sure we have separate videos just talking about that. Uh and how, you know, uh, it, it doesn't work when the wind's not blowing or the sun's not shining. Nuclear power on the other hand, that's constantly going and it's also zero carbon emissions. So it's just like why wouldn't if you have this giant tool in your toolbox why wouldn't you bring it out to save the world? I mean, we're talking about, like, if you're in a situation here where it's just like, yeah, you know, it doesn't matter. It's just like aesthetics or anything like that. We just we just want to, like, virtue signal, like, and nothing else matters, then sure, yeah, have your wind and solar. But if you think the world is coming to an end in 10 years, if we don't do anything about this, why wouldn't you use this bazooka that's sitting in your in your toolbox? So I think that there is multiple reasons uh, that the that we would say that the left hates nuclear energy. Um, I think the most the the one that I truly believe in, I think we'll get to last because I think there are some other ones that could we we should potentially talk about here. And the first one is just like that idea of just like the the danger that people see in nuclear energy. So I think the the two main culprits when it comes to this kind of argument is uh, one is like the the radioactive sludge that the Mr. Burnses of the world are hiding in trees and parks and Springfield. And two, like, uh, I don't know about you, but when I watched that Chernobyl show on HBO like a year and a half ago, it legitimately scared me. So it's like I could see people having some hesitation towards nuclear energy just based on those two caricatures. Uh, but as you know, we've done more research. We talk about uh, energy all the time on, on, you know, this show or the in the tank podcast. Uh, so we kind of already know the responses to that, but uh, how would you counter, you know, like a peer of yours that's bringing up those concerns about nuclear energy? Yeah, well, I think first of all, um, I, I think you have to deal with, uh, you know, when you think about Chernobyl and when you think about Three Mile Island or any of the really catastrophic nuclear events, uh, nuclear disaster, Fukushima, right? 
Um, the thing that everybody needs to keep in mind is that relatively speaking, these things are incredibly, incredibly rare. They almost never happen. The reason that you can remember them all is because they're so rare. There's so <laughs> right. few of them, right? right? If they were happening all the time, then you wouldn't even be able to remember them. Why does everyone remember Chernobyl? Chernobyl was like 40 years ago. <laughs> Why does everyone remember an event from 40 years ago? We weren't alive. Neither of us were alive right, when that right. happened. So why why is it that everyone remembers it or talks about it all the time? It's because it's so rare. And so people think of it as being so, so you know, it, it's, it's burned into their memories for that reason. Oil spills, um, you know, train crashes with energy, uh, carrying conventional energy sources, um, uh, uh, solar panels and windmills and stuff breaking down hydroelectric. I mean, these things happen all the time. It's just that, you know, there's it happens so often people don't, I think, worry about it in the same way. The other thing is that it was so scary when yeah. it did happen, right? Because people didn't really know what was going to occur as a result of this, right? And the potential danger of, of a disaster like that happening is higher than, say, an oil spill where it's only going to affect the area where you have the oil spill. Um, but a lot of those dangers, um, as you well know, uh, a lot of those dangers are really overblown. Um, not only because they're rare, they essentially never happen again. People are using nuclear energy all over the place. In Europe, they're using it all over Eastern Europe. Uh, many of these countries are running uh, half their energy or more on nuclear energy, uh, a quarter or more. There's tons of countries in Europe that are doing this. Yeah, isn't it like France, like 70% or something crazy? It is crazy? something. Yeah, I, I think it is France. Yeah, I mean, th these, these countries are running massive amounts of their energy on nuclear, and yet they, they don't have any disasters how come france hasn't had a disaster right um and does any american like any real true red-blooded american believe that the french are better <laughs> than us at anything i mean come on does anyone actually believe that if france can get away with using nuclear energy then we definitely can get away with using nuclear energy so really you have to and and, the fr and and france is a liberal country it's a far left-wing country sure. which is also interesting right so why is it that the left here is so opposed to it even though the left in europe is not opposed to it that i think is a really interesting and very telling uh, uh difference between these two groups that normally agree on just about everything um, so I think there is something there. I think there's a political ideological reason for it. I don't think it's based on actual safety concerns. Um, not that many people actually died uh, at Chernobyl because of the radiation, even though it was a huge disaster. Um, Chernobyl was run by the Soviet Union, which, you know, is it was a train wreck country, right? By right. The, the Ukrainian subset of the <laughs> Soviet Union. It's yeah. Like really top guys on that. It's like the B team in the <laughs> Soviet Union, which is really just terrible. Um, and and then you know, <laughs> and then on top of that, on top of that, um, even Fukushima, uh, which everyone thinks of as being sort of a modern thing. I mean, that was not because they were just incompetent per se um they made some mistakes and stuff like that but really it was there was a tsunami you yeah. know and it was it had much less to do with something they were doing wrong in this in the way chernobyl was mismanagement this was not mismanagement in that same kind of way and even at fukushima more people died from the actual tsunami than from the nuclear disaster oh sure that occurred after the tsunami oh, yeah. Yeah. so you know it doesn't stop people from living in Japan though, because they have tsunamis there. People still live there, right? People have left Japan because, well, we get tsunamis and so it's too dangerous to live here. So I, I, there's, I mean, look, you are far, 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 far more likely to die from about a million other things oh, than sure. you are from nuclear energy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, so I get it. Like I'm a proponent of a uh, uh, nuclear energy. Like I do think that it has a, a big role and probably an increasingly important role going into the future. But I understand that concern, you know, the idea of Fukushima, even if it's like an act of God, it's like, well, what's preventing the next act of God? I get it. Um, we will address some of that a little bit later in this episode, too. But I do want to also uh, talk about like that nuclear sludge concept, 
which is just it's just a myth right that right. is a complete Sorry. myth there is you... no barrels of green sludge that, that mr burns is shoving into trees in the park of springfield <laughs> right i forgot you're trying to set me up for that one and i totally blew it <laughs> no um, no no it's totally fine yeah i i, I think there was a uh, article that michael schellenberger wrote and of course we are not you know, anywhere near on the level of Michael Schellenberger when it comes to knowledge of nuclear power. If you're interested in learning more, Michael Schellenberger is fantastic, writes for Forbes, has a new book. What's the new book called? Do you remember? Apocalypse Never. Apocalypse Never. It's a great book. Um, and, and so if you're interested in learning more of the nitty gritty details of it, check out his, his work. But yeah. Michael Schellenberger uh, wrote this article for Forbes and in it, he said, um, he's talking about nuclear waste and he's talking about how much nuclear waste actually takes up because this is one of the main things that the environmental left is always pointing to when they say they don't like nuclear. It's like, well, what are we going to do with all nuclear waste? Like there's not enough land in the United States to consume all the nuclear waste. We have to dig up mountains in order to bury it and all this crazy stuff. And the truth is that's, that's just, just not even remotely accurate, not right. even remotely accurate. So Schellenberger says if all the nuclear waste from U.S. power plants were put on a football field, okay? And nuclear energy is uh, uh, is about 20% of, of U.S. energy right now, um, utility-scale energy. Okay. Uh, it says um, U.S. power plants, uh, if you took all the nuclear waste from U.S. power plants and you put it on a football field, one football field, 100 yards, it would stack up just 50 feet high. In comparison to the waste produced by every other kind of energy of electricity production, that quantity is close to zero. Okay, so one football field, 50 feet high, that's all of the nuclear waste that's been produced. Okay, that is, I mean, that's nothing. That's nothing. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, you know how many football fields exist in Nevada worth of just worthless empty land? Uh, a lot. Yeah, we could <laughs> a just whole heck of a lot. We, we could just use the the Houston Texans football field. They're not using it for anything. Yeah, they're garbage too. <laughs> so I mean, it makes perfect sense. I th there is so much space. Okay, we're not Singapore. Okay, sure. where we have no land. We have so much land. We don't even. We literally have don't know what to do with it. Okay, so we've got we've got more than enough land, more than enough techno technological advancements. We, we know how to store this safely. It's, this is not a mystery and it doesn't require some crazy amount of moving mountains and digging up the earth to be like, no, there, there are really safe, easy ways to store nuclear waste. It is not anywhere near as difficult as people on the left like to say, those are the facts. Those are not some biased opinion from right-wing zealots. Michael Schellenberger is not a, a right-wing zealot. He's on the political left. He's spent most of his career talking about environmentalism from a left-wing perspective. And yet he and many other reasonable people who have looked into this agree that nuclear power, nuclear waste from nuclear power is not a significant environmental problem. Yeah, so let's kind of move on to the um, what I believe is the real reason why the left hates nuclear power. And I was just trying to find it on my phone. I was trying to find that one quote that we found years ago. It's from the Sierra Club, which is a very environmentalist group. And on their website, it doesn't exist anymore. It's not on their website anymore, but we have screenshots. I just forget exactly where I put them right now. Uh, where it's talking about what their stance is on nuclear energy. And in it, it says something along the lines of how that they're against uh, nuclear power because it will lead to excess economic growth and, and energy abundance or something like that. Right. And it's just like, whoa, excess economic growth and energy abundance. These are things why you would be against nuclear energy. Right. And this really gets down to the the core of kind of the environmentalist perspective on this. But Justin, you you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, no, I think you're I think you're exactly I think you're hitting it right on the head here. Why would you be opposed if you're an environmentalist? You're the Sierra Club. Why would you be opposed to a form of energy that provides abundant energy with virtually no CO two emissions, which you think is destroying the planet? And doesn't take up that much land relative to all the renewable energy sources, which we really didn't, you know, get super into here. But renewable energy, as we commonly refer to it, like solar and wind, these take up massive amounts of land. They require massive amounts of rare earth minerals. 
these are environmentally destructive forms of energy production. They're actually not green energy, no matter what you want to call it. So why is it that the, why would they hate nuclear then? I think the, the only explanation as reflected in that Sierra Club quote is that it will lead to too much economic growth yeah. and too much economic growth from a far left wing environmental perspective is bad because more economic growth means more people building. It means more human beings. It means, it means all of these things that they don't like. And so they see the proliferation of affordable energy is actually a bad thing. And it's one of the reasons why the environmental left is not really that concerned about the cost of renewable energy. Mm -hmm. It's not just because they just believe you could print any amount of money that you want. I mean, that's part of it. Um, but it's also because they don't, they don't care if it's economically inefficient. That's fine because less economic efficiency is, is in their minds good for the planet. And so I, I do believe that that is a core part of all of this. And um, for those who are not familiar with the new movie that's that was directed by Jeff Gibbs and produced by Michael Moore, um, that talks a lot about renewable energy and how it's all essentially garbage. What's the mm -hmm. name of that movie? Uh, Planet Remember? of the Humans. Planet of the Humans. Um, that that movie is really, really interesting. There are oh, things yeah. in it that we don't agree with, obviously, but there are a lot of things in that we have been saying for years and nobody's yeah. been listening to us on the <laughs> right. left. Now, all of a sudden, Michael Moore and, and Jeff Gibbs are saying, it, and it's like, what the heck's going on here? Uh, but their main conclusion at the end is exactly why pe people don't support nuclear energy. Their main conclusion at the end is, well, the only solution to the problems that we have for environmentalism is fewer human beings, right. essentially. Yeah. We need less people. We need people to live... Uh, more in line with nature, you know, that kind of thing. And so that is the real reason why the environmental left, I think, doesn't like this. Yeah, and that's the environmental left. I want to get to, to the more broad left in general here, that the ones that are going crazy about wind and solar and how that's the cure for everything. But to your point here, there's another famous quote that we always talk about, which is from our favorite doomsday uh, predictor, Paul Ehrlich who said giving society cheap, abundant energy would be the equivalent of giving an idiot child a machine gun. Because in their mind, if we're not constrained by the amount of energy that we have, we're just going to burn the whole planet down. So they don't want to have free, abundant energy. Right. Uh, but to go on to that, uh, that, that latter point that I was making about just the left in general, uh, this is also a Michael Schellenberger article that I've got pulled up right here from Forbes. The real reason they hate nuclear is because it means we don't need renewables. So uh, as you kind of go through here, there's a lot of really interesting facts. Uh, in fact, you should check out this article, but I just want to get to one point towards the end here where he's talking about uh, Naomi Klein. And Naomi Klein says, real climate solutions, she insists, are ones that steer power and control to the community level, whether through community-controlled renewable energy, local organic agriculture, or transit systems genuinely accountable to their users. In short, explained Klein, climate change supercharges pre-existing case for virtu virtually every progressive demand on the books, binding them to a coherent agenda based on clear scientific imperative. So they need a crisis. They need a crisis and they don't need a real solution to that crisis or else their justification for all of their socialist uh, uh, proposals out there go by the wayside. So they only want this, this, these solutions that don't actually work. That's why they want wind and solar and that's why they don't want nuclear energy. I well, think that's as bluntly as I can put it. Right. It, well, I will say this and you'll agree with me on this. It's not that they don't want it. It's, it's not that they think it won't work they know it will work. It's, it's what they want it to do. <laughs> they, yeah. they don't w work to them does not mean provide affordable energy. That's the point. Work for them means provides these big, massive government programs and also provides CO2, you know, limited CO2 emissions. Like they, they want both things. That's yeah. what work means to them.
No, if they you, want the control over it. They want and control having over it. having terrible right. wind and solar as as our as our main uh, producers of energy would require more and more control. Just like you're right. seeing in California, you know, all of the regulations that are coming down the pipe because of that. That's if, what they want. If we had widespread nuclear energy or just like affordable, cheap, abundant energy, there would be no reason for the government to have to have their hands all over it. Yeah, if if. If there were a, uh, if aliens from space came down and dropped off some little box that could power the entire world with this little box, no yeah. emissions forever, right. and then they just fly away and say, "Here you go, human beings. You get you get affordable energy forever because we we love affordable energy and we want to yeah. help you." And they fly away. Right. Okay, we get free energy forever. I guarantee you the left would find a reason not to open that box. They would say, no, can't do it. Can't do it. We can't trust aliens. You know, there would be some explanation. (laughs) There'd be some reason for why we can't have that because, because it is a huge, huge, massive part of the playbook and to just, and they've been trying for a half century or more to use this playbook to advance their other agendas on the left. And so for them to backtrack on that and say, okay, you know what? Actually, we discovered a really affordable kind of energy now and it's CO2 emissions free. So great, problem solved, climate crisis over, we're, we're good. That's literally never going to happen. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Under no circumstance will they ever agree that that's going to happen. If it, yeah. Even if everyone said, Oh, that's that's great. We found it. Like we all agree, they would find some other reason they, instead of climate change. It would be something else. Yeah. It would be you know uh, about land use, or it would be nuclear waste, or whatever. And the reason I know that this is true, my alien box theory is true, is <laughs> because essentially that's what nuclear power is. All right. You know, relatively yeah. speaking, it's well, essentially uh, that it's it's it may not be, you know, free energy or the, even the most affordable kind of energy. Per well, OK, se. So that's a good segue. That's a good segue, because the last thing I wanted to do on this uh, episode is to kind of just talk about like the room for innovation. So because of uh, things like Chernobyl, uh, you know, like that just caused public fear to uh, basically allow the government to wrap so much red tape around nuclear energy that like it just is impossible to actually start up any new nuclear power plants. So we've been stuck in this like era of like the early 80s when it comes to technology for nuclear power. And it's just like if we if we allowed it, if we freed this up, there'd be so much more room for innovation. We'd be talking about decades worth of innovation that we could be potentially benefiting from. And we're already starting to see that a little bit. So there's a there's a couple of things that I've been keeping an eye on. One are these uh, small module reactors. So these are like uh, super safe. There's like no fear of them uh, melting down or anything like that, even in the worst case scenarios. And I think Rolls Royce is coming out with like a version of this, these small module reactors. They could be scaled up. So if you wanted to run like a giant city on them, you just like drop 10 of them next to each other, plug them in, boom, you got, you got your, uh, your power going. And then there's another, there's fusion reactors that they're building in France. And this is like a joint effort with experts from, I don't know, like 15 different countries that are working on this to, to replicate the same type of stuff that's going on in the sun to generate energy. So, and, and then there's also innovation that's coming to like the, the nuclear waste problem, if you really do think there is a problem, where it could be recycled and used to generate other types of reactors. So it's just like once we kind of free up the the uh, American innovation or just world innovation. Like I think we can see leaps and bounds in the productivity and the in, in a, the efficiency of these energy sources, and we will get something closer to the <laughs> Justin's alien box theory. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like, but no, no, we're shackled to these terrible wind turbines and solar panels that are reaching their theoretical limit of efficiency. Yeah, well, and and again, we didn't go into too much detail on this. We've we've done this before. Maybe we'll do it again at some point. But we're not the, the amount of the amount of land and the amount of resources and the amount of of time and mining and all this stuff that would be required to tear down the existing system and replace it with one that relies on eighty percent, you know, wind and solar is so incredible 
it is literally, I think, incomprehensible for yeah. most people to fully grasp. Right. We're talking about we're talking about massive, massive amounts of of land. We're talking about whole states worth of of land being consumed entirely by wind farms and solar facilities and the new transmission lines that you would need to build and all the problems that would exist in places where they don't have a lot of sunshine for example like cleveland ohio or minnesota you know they're not getting tons of sun in these places and you know it gets so cold there in the winter you can't necessarily always run on wind for example you need to have some kind of backup there are all these other problems that we didn't get into um the fact that china controls the rare earth minerals the vast majority of the rare earth minerals market um that's a pretty big problem right do we really want to rely on china for our entire energy system to run so that china could at any point in time say you know what we're not giving you guys any more rare earth minerals screw you well then what then what we just we just shut down the whole country just yeah. goes dark like what's the plan here i mean there's so many problems with this whole system um it's not just the things we've talked about here it's a million other things on top of it and nuclear is really the dead giveaway that there's a deeper agenda than just environmentalism and that's why it's such an important issue yeah yeah absolutely and you're right. There's a lot of interconnected things. We could start going down a rabbit hole of just talking oh, about sure. how it, uh, environmentally toxic wind and solar is. I mean, that's a whole nother video in itself. Uh, but yeah, I think we're gonna, just going to leave it here unless there's any other last bits that you want to jump in with. Nope. Hearing nothing, I will say that uh, if you like this video, you want to see more, like I said, you have to hit that subscribe button. Like and share this video. It's the only way that people are going to see it. Like I said, uh, YouTube and Google are not going to do us any help here. If you want to see more of our content, obviously there's Stopping Socialism TV on YouTube. You can find a lot of our stuff or all of our stuff at stoppingsocialism.com. You can find the majority of our stuff on different social media, Facebook, Stopping Socialism. We also have a socialist Twitter account and an Instagram account, and we even have a parlor account, so you can find us on pretty much all social media. Justin, where can the fine people find you? At Justin T. Askins, Facebook and Twitter. All right. Thank you all, and we will talk to you next time.